The Buffalo Bills signed defensive end Casey Tuhill. Who is he? What does he bring to the table? And how does he factor into this defense? We're breaking all of that down today on Locked On Bills. You are Locked On Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout-out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate you all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, folks, welcome in. The Buffalo Bills have a new defensive end, Casey Tuhill. We're going to break him down on this episode. I'll tell you who he is, what his skill set is. I studied his film just prior to recording this episode, so I want to share what stood out to me from watching his tape and then, of course, project him to this Buffalo Bills 2024 defense. So let's do it. Casey Tuhill signs a one-year deal with the Bills. We do not have the terms of the deal yet. I'm guessing it's not a super big cap hit, probably closer to the league minimum. He's 27 years old. He turns 28 in August, Six foot four, 250 pounds, 33 and a half inch arms, nine and a half inch hands, He has an RAS score, which is relative athleticism score, factoring size and athleticism relative to a position. That comes in at a 9.5, and a perfect score is a 10. So he tested extremely well at the NFL Scouting Combine, ran a 4.62 40-yard dash, 39-inch vertical jump, 10-foot, 6-inch broad jump, 4.21 short shuttle, 7.08 three-cone. Those are are very good numbers. He, He tested extremely well. Winds up being a seventh-round pick in the 2020 NFL Draft out of Stanford. He was picked by the Philadelphia Eagles. And at Stanford, he was a 3-4 outside linebacker. Stanford's known for their odd front defenses, and he kind of played this rush linebacker-type role for them. In terms of college production, he kind of ramped up like most players throughout their college career, was on track to be a full-time starter as a junior and then he missed half of that season with an arm injury comes back in 2019 he is the full-time starter starts all 12 games collects 60 tackles 11 and a half for loss and eight sacks I also love that he blocked two extra points uh during his college career and those are those are tough to block right those are short kicks and he was able to get his hand on a couple of those so he starts his career with the Philadelphia Eagles And he's waived by October or about mid-October during his rookie season. The Washington Commanders claimed him off waivers, and then he remained with Washington for the next three and a half seasons until his contract expired after the 2023 season. So for his NFL career, Tuhill has played in 47 games with 14 starts. He did start eight games in 2023 started six games in 2021. He has seven career sacks, five of them coming this past season in 2023. And he got a big time opportunity this past year after Washington traded away both their starting defensive ends, Montez Sweat and Chase Young. And so he was able to come in and play a ton of snaps while those guys were no longer on the team, which was important for him to position himself to earn this next opportunity given, you know, Washington cleaned house, fired their coaching staff. They have a new general manager. And so, you know, two Hill and a lot of the guys that were expiring contracts or have been on that team, they're not part of this new regime. And as you know, in the NFL, when new general managers and head coaches take over, they pretty much gut the roster and, and bring in their own guys. And so two Hill on the open market, lands with the Buffalo Bills. And again, that that chance to play down the stretch last year was very meaningful for him. Uh, for the most of his career, or for really all of his career, he's been a rotational type player. 
I uh, did play 45% of Washington's defensive snaps in 2023. That's a career high. 36% in 2022, 35% in 2021. Also worth noting that he's an accomplished special teams player. And that's important as a depth player. The more you can do matters. And for his career, he has logged 624 career special team snaps in the NFL. And that includes all four phases. So kick return, punt return, punt coverage, kick coverage, and then, of course, on the field goal block team as well. So that's kind of setting the scene there for who Casey Tuhill is. Like I said, I studied his tape. And so next, I want to break down his skill set and what really stood out to me on tape. And then, of course, how does he factor into the Buffalo Bills defense? We're going to get into all of that here in just a moment, so be sure to stick with me. Passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook because right now new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins, that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they tear down the nets. All right, folks, I studied the tape. I watched uh, Casey Tuhill early on Wednesday morning so that I can talk about him on this recording. And so I want to share what stood out to me from really getting acquainted with his skill set. And just to let you know, I watched three games in 2023. Uh, they were Washington against Los Angeles Rams, the Miami Dolphins, and the Seattle Seahawks. So what stood out to me? It's very obvious the thing that stands out to you about Two Hill when you watch him. It's his motor. This dude plays like his hair is on fire. He plays every snap like it's the last snap he's ever going to play. And that that's easy to love, right? You want guys that play with urgency, guys that play with maximum effort. You're going to love the way that he strains for his gap against the run. He never accepts defeat. Even when he starts to lose a leverage battle against the run or he's starting to get pinned or he's not supposed to, he competes so hard to get back into that fit and um, just plays with a ton of urgency. That that motor is always cranked. And so I love how he strains for his gaps against the run. There's even some times, that, especially in the Rams game, where you know they run a lot of wide zone and he's dealing with Tyler Higby and he's dealing with Alaric Jackson. He's dealing with Robert Havenstein. Those are pretty good players. And they're trying to hook him or they're trying to pin him inside or they're trying to wide, you know, really widen him out. And the way he competes is just something that really, really stands out. Very, very competitive player. Uh, as a backside run defender, this dude hunts. This guy hunts the football. You know, when he's not play side and he's pursuing from the backside, he gets on his horse, he triggers, and he makes a lot of plays kind of crashing down from the backside. And then for a guy that plays with this level of, of urgency and, and uh, with his hair on fire, I can appreciate how disciplined he is, uh, especially against the run. He doesn't really take himself out of his run fits. He Even as a backside defender, you can see that he's able to pursue with urgency, but also not take himself out of the play, not take himself out of his contained responsibilities. And, and that's very likable. And I think in that pursuit, right, when he's chasing the football, whether it's um, it's a quick pass and he turns and runs to the ball or it's an outside run and he runs to the sideline or whatever he's doing, that's really where you see that athleticism show up. I talked about in the opening, the outstanding RAS score, the outstanding combine testing. I think where you really see that athleticism show up is when he's in pursuit. Also, uh, he's athletic enough to play in space a little bit. Not that that's going to be a big part of his, his duties, but 
for a Bills defense that likes to run simulated pressures. And a simulated pressure is when you rush four, but it's not necessarily the four down lineman. You will usually drop a defensive lineman and send a second level player at the pocket. And so you're going to ask some of your players to occasionally drop into space. I think two Hill has the athleticism to do that and the comfort. I thought as a, as a short area zone dropper, when Washington asked him to do that, he looked comfortable enough. And so I think when you when you consider his athleticism, those are the two areas where it really, really popped for me. As a pass rusher, well, you guessed it. He's very hard charging, right? He gets he gets into his rush and he competes. Uh, there's a good variety of rush moves that he has. He keeps his hands very, very busy, and he'll work counters. He'll he'll really try to soften those angles and uh, work his hands, which is important. He never really. Um, stops activating his th- his hands through every snap. And that's important. Now, how do you get off blocks? Well, you use your hands. You use your hands to, to displace the other guy's hands and soften angles and get off of them. I can appreciate from two ill how active he keeps his hands. I would say that for a guy that is hard charging, that has active hands, that has rush moves, I mean, I saw dip and rip. I saw club swim. I saw some bull rush. I saw some one-arm stab. He's got a lot of different stuff. Um, even some ghost moves. Uh, there's a, a lot of likable pass rush moves in his arsenal. I will say, though, I wish that his athleticism showed up more as a pass rusher, uh, particularly with his first step quickness. I, I thought his first step was very ordinary. I think he's probably below average when it comes to snap anticipation. So those are two things that work together. You want to be explosive off the ball but you also want to be explosive off the ball and anticipate the snap so you can maximize that ability to fire off, get into the neutral zone, and start to put some stress on that offensive tackle to be able to move their feet and stay in front of you. Well, I I don't think Hill does too much of that, right? I wish he was more explosive off the ball, and I wish he anticipated that snap a little cleaner. I would also say that he's not super twitchy as a pass rusher. He's athletic, but he's not very twitchy where you you see guys be able to kind of reduce their body, reduce their surface area, juke, head fakes, have some twitch, and really kind of force that offensive tackle to deaden their feet, right? Their feet kind of die, and they're they're kind of stuck in the mud, and then you can kind of juke and counter and, and get by them, right? It doesn't I don't see a lot of that or, or any of that when I watched Casey Tuhill. Um, so you wish he was quicker off the ball. You wish he anticipated the snap better. You wish he had a little bit more twitch as a pass rusher. I mean, simply put as a pass rusher, you just don't see a lot of one-on-one wins. Um, that's just not part of his game. Where he does find success and he does find production is that he does keep battling. He is an urgent player. He plays with a hot motor, and because he continues to compete throughout the snap, that will find him some production. Um, I mean this complimentary, but do you remember Boogie Basham? Not a very good football player, but a guy that was able to consistently hustle and that found him some plays and I think you see some of that with Casey Tuhill. Um, I think Tuhill is a more desirable player to me than Basham but in terms of a guy that doesn't win a lot of one-on-one battles but still finds himself around the football you know, I think that's kind of where you see it as a pass rusher he just kind of keeps coming right that quarterback takes an extra hitch they hold on the ball for an extra second because he's continuing to try to work and find some soft areas in the pocket or some soft angles to get to the quarterback he's able to find some production because he pursues so hard when that quarterback escapes the pocket, he's crashing down on him, right? That's where you see him make an impact. So that 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 urgency really, really matters for him. Uh, he's also pretty modest in terms of bend and flexibility. So that makes it difficult for him to win one-on-one when you can't dip and bend and turn and flatten around a corner, right, an edge of an offensive tackle. Like you have to be able to do that to 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 consistently win one on one in the NFL, and I think that ability to dip and bend and be flexible and tilt and really angle around the corners of an offensive lineman, I think some of that is missing. I will say that he's a very disciplined pass rusher. He stays in his rush lane, which matters a lot. He's not a guy that gets too far up the field. You can tell that he can tell when he's about parallel with that quarterback, he knows to work back underneath and got, not get too far up the field and give those quarterbacks escape outlets when they're uh, trying to extend plays. So I, I can appreciate for a guy that plays with his urgency that he's also very disciplined to not get too far up the field. 
I think he does play off of his teammates well. And so you hear different players talk about, well, we have to rush together. We have to rush as one. It's not just a bunch of one guys trying to win one-on-one battles. There's a rush plan to attack the pocket. And I think he does understand how to loop and play off of his teammates and, and see how they rush to figure out where those softer areas of the pocket are that he can then charge and pursue the football. He's a very good contain rusher, like I mentioned, and that's very helpful against mobile quarterbacks, but also some of the cage rush elements where the Bills do this a lot, where it's it's the, the entire design is to compress that pocket around the quarterback, right? Cage rush, cage that quarterback in. I think he's very good helping in that capacity as well. So some good translatability conceptually to what a lot of a lot of things like the Bills, a lot of things the Bills like to do when attacking uh, the quarterback. So a high effort player, a dis- disciplined player. I'd call him a smart processor. I think he recognizes plays well and understands what he's supposed to do. But modest functional strength, modest get off, modest flexibility, right? He's got some limitations to him. So um, some likable traits, but certainly some things missing from the toolbox. So how does he factor into this Bills defense? Well, I mean, Greg Rousseau, that's clearly one of your starters. I think between A.J. Epinesa and Von Miller, you you have another starter. Um, I, I think he factors in as like a defensive end for 30, 40% of the snaps type player, can do some of the things that Shaq Lawson has provided this defense over the years. I'd stop short of saying he upgrades Shaq Lawson. Um, I think Shaq Lawson is is a fundamentally sound player in exactly the ways that two Hill is. He plays extremely hard. Maybe he's not as athletic, but I'd say that Shaq is a better run defender for sure. I think he's every bit of the contain rusher. Maybe he doesn't have the same level of athleticism in pursuit. And so, but I I think Shaq's got a little bit more in his bag as a pass rusher too. So I'm not, I'm stopping short of calling this an upgrade to Shaq Lawson. But I think what you have here is a serviceable defensive end four that has some ceiling to him because of the athleticism, because of the length, because he hasn't necessarily commanded a ton of opportunity, right? You're thinking, well, does Buffalo kind of unlock a little bit more for him uh, not playing behind Montez Sweat and Chase Young and, and maybe having a chance to eat into some more snaps? We'll see. I think a, he's a perfectly reasonable fourth defensive end for a team like the Bills that rotate their defensive linemen. And I think that urgency is going to matter and, and, and that pursuit effort is going to matter. I think he can help on special teams. So you can see the path, right? And I know that some people are like, only want to hear big names. Well, why the Bills should assign Chase Young or wh- whatever name that you f- would like the Bills to sign. Not every single player is a star, right? You need 53 players on your roster to contribute. If you watch the Bills last season, you knew late in the season, it took all 53 guys to win some of those games. and. Um, you need players like this to round out your roster. You need depth. Not every player is Ed Oliver or Greg Rousseau or Terrell Bernard, right? They're they're not always that. You need those complementary pieces to to help you win football games and help you win football games throughout the entire course of the season. So a useful depth player, that's what I call him. Um, but I don't know that this is a player that I'm expecting a big jump in production and like a big breakout or anything like that. I think he's kind of who he is and who he is is a useful depth player for the Buffalo Bills defensive end room. So there you have it. Casey Tuhill, the newest Buffalo Bill. Hopefully this conversation helped you get acquainted with him and can understand how he can help this football team in 2024. All right, folks, that's going to do it for us here on this episode, kind of a mini episode. We just did a huge one uh, on Tuesday afternoon, breaking down a bunch of wide receiver prospects for the Bills in the 2024 NFL Draft. Want to get to herd mentality this week. Want to get to some more prospect discussions this week. And of course, stay on top of any news just like this signing of KC Two Hill. So don't miss anything. Make sure that you're subscribed. We'd love it if you took a second to rate, review, and share the podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills! And I look forward to catching up with you again real soon.